Hi, this is Tom from Evergrey and you're listening to Rock File Radio. Hi, it's Scott Hamilton with Rock File Radio. Very, very happy to be on today with Tom England of Evergrey. Man, I've been a fan for so long. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, I am glad you guys got the new album out. It's been out for almost a month now. It's hitting great all over the world. So how was it? I mean, it's just, I mean, the album is old for us. I'm on the next album now. So right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit paradoxical, you know, being drawn back into this world of this album. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's all great. Uh, as you said, we're getting rave reviews and charting everywhere pretty much. So it's uh, which is quite an uh, you know, achievement on your 12th album. You know? Well, and that was something I was going to mention because a lot of people are talking about this is one of your best ever and so many bands, you know, don't evolve as well as you guys have had, right, you know, right. and, and the last three albums were kind of a conceptual trilogy. So how did you kick off this, this song cycle? Well, we decided we shouldn't do a trilogy. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, that's what we try to do each and every time. We try to reinvent ourselves and try to find a try to find stuff that makes this fun for us each and every time right on top of of course trying to you know write the best songs ever it's uh that's what uh, the main goal is the end game you know and and that's what uh and we, i mean i guess that's also what we have been getting great at in a sense we know we know what's good and what's not good you know and uh <laughs> And if we think it's good, then that's a good enough for the rest of the world. <laughs> because we don't write for other people first and foremost. We have to write for ourselves first. So, yeah. And then we're just lucky that people seem to love it. And uh, You got this done pretty much before COVID, right? And, and it just got pushed back because of the situation the world is in. I mean, the album, we started recording. Actually, I got home from a vacation in Hong Kong and Thailand. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I landed on the same day that the first uh, COVID case was uh, discovered in Sweden. Right. So there was, uh, it was exactly like a year ago now. And uh, by that time, we, we, we had only recorded or started writing our own stuff back in December already. But oh. uh, so uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we finished recording October two, last year. So, uh, yeah. So during this, that, that presented some interesting challenges, I'm sure. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, the only, the only real challenge was actually that we had uh, enough time to do whatever we wanted, you know, because <laughs> we, were already, we were already scheduled to do this, you know? So for us, it was just pure luck, to be honest. We had 10 to 12 shows canceled, uh, uh, but outside of that, we got to concentrate on only playing and recording and writing music instead of flying to you know right wherever in the midst of it i mean we love that too but i mean if if we can get both worlds and as much time as possible for both then i'm all for it <laughs> you've had some great imagery in all the videos you've done you've been on the side of like uh, the tundra and then you've been in in an intimate uh, like concert venue and now the new videos you know we have horses and planes and so where is all this imagery coming from is it you guys combining with the director or yeah, yeah, it's my, it's my twisted mind mostly that uh, brings <laughs> all of these things in. But I mean, I think it's uh, for me it's uh, important that things look good. You know, it, it's uh, it's one of the interests I have as on top of you know writing and recording music. Right. I, I think uh, I have a I have a interested in in the imagery and 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 uh, I have an inner eye that tells me this is how it should look but i mean of course getting a russian plane in there wasn't <laughs> very easy and that's not that was maybe not the, the initial idea that I, it just happened to be there to be honest so yeah and, and everybody's talking about the album cover artwork too everybody loves it yes. you know and yes yeah i mean yeah we we i mean we're just blessed to be working with uh, a lot of great persons and for 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 a long time now i mean patrick who makes our videos we have done videos together since um the inner circle album that came out in 2003 i think mm -hmm. or two two even somewhere around there and and uh, i i think i've done 25 videos with him and he's my, wow. one of my best friends so so yeah i mean we we've gotten to know each other real good and of course gianni snackos from greece who made the cover for this album he, he uh, is extremely talented 
this is his third album with us, I think, or second. I can't remember, but uh, I mean, I just told him about the story that I had in mind. I let's free this poor uh, phoenix bird. That was the idea that I had, <laughs> and, uh, and he went with that. So yeah. Well, it turned out great because the feedback I've read online is like, "Wow, I got to get a T-shirt of that." And you, you guys yeah, had the T-shirts exactly. out quickly. <laughs> Yep, uh, we sold out more than once. So yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful thing these days because you know artists are having to find now other ways. You have to make money to do what you do. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. we don't live in a Star Trek world where we can just go you know do art for art's sake. Unfortunately, but yeah. finding these new revenue streams has that been challenging for you? But you've always kind of had an eye with the visual and the T-shirts and the other stuff. Yeah, but on the other hand, I mean, I wouldn't say that either that the, the, the t-shirts are what's bringing in because when we tour, of course, that's that's sure. the key income. And now we, when we don't tour, it's more of a hassle trying to send stuff to America, for instance, you know, right. with a ship nowadays because it's so complicated, everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've offered my services to as a singer to each and everyone who won me in there. And that's been extremely rewarding. I just put out a YouTube video like before the summer last year. And since then, I've been singing on fans songs and albums and stuff every week. So it's uh, that's wonderful. Uh, it really is. It's extremely rewarding. It uh, I mean, of course, I charge them for it, but <laughs> I, they they get what they want. And, and uh, I get to sort of step into their world of music. And, and, and it's just wonderful to to be able to, you know, reconnect with some of the things that you've lost being in this professionally. You also, you're not that innocent anymore. You know, you have, you, you have it's more of a business thing, but when you enter uh, a kid in Australia's uh, acoustic guitar song and he wants to have me on it, then it's, it's just wonderful. It's, it's just great to be able to get that close to that creativity again. Well, and you've, you've professionally, you've been, I remember there was one time, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of DGM and all of a sudden they release a song and you're on it and things like that. Um, and you've always had collaborations on your album. So like, um, how did the James Labrie thing come about? He called me and asked, can I please be on the new album? <laughs> 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 no. I called him and pleaded. No, I actually it was like this. We were sitting in the Evergreen studio listening to this song, uh, The Beholder, uh, in, in the quite early stages of, uh, quite late stages in the terms of writing the actual music for the song. But I hadn't written a word yet, but I knew that I wanted to do, be about a role model or somebody that you looked up to. And James has been there uh, throughout my career, uh, always in the background sort of, you know, uh, as an inspiration, I would say. I mean, Dream Theater was the band that made it possible for, for, for bands in my type of music to make it in a sense. You know, mm -hmm. so, and we toured with them, and we toured with him, and and so, so I wouldn't say we're friends, but we're friendly colleagues at least. So, I had this heard this song, and then I said to the guys, I hear a guest vocalist here, and it was like all of a sudden everybody knew who 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 it should be. Uh, <laughs> there was, oh! It needs to be James. <laughs> so either it was something in the melody or, or the harmonies or the chord progression or something that reminded us all of him. So I just wrote him an email t telling him about the subject of the song and, and sent him the song and he said he would love to do it. That's great. Amazing how those collaborations work like that. It's amazing. I mean, it's, a, that's a, it's so nice to be able to sort of close a circle in a sense for me personally. Right. My private reasons for I mean, having your one of your idols be on your own music, it's just a wonderful thing. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So how do the collaborations, I mean, since you always have collaborated with other artists and such, and now you're doing this thing during COVID where, you know, pretty much anybody uh, that, that has the money or whatever, um, how does that affect what you do when you go off on your own? You know, because I'm sure you pick up little things from other people. Um, it might be something as simple as the way they phrase something or the, the way they did their vocals or whatever. Do you pick up little things like that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's so rewarding doing, you know, ordinary people's music, not professional <laughs> musicians. But I mean, right. not, and I'm not downplaying that at all. But I mean, like people that are not 
involved in the business side of things. I mean, and I've done I've done, I've done professional bands music as well, but it's so nice to just come in and get their perspective of music and be more of a tool than being the creative force behind something. Right. I mean, I've done everything from singing whatever they want me to sing to actually write the uh, words and and the melodies and and for for like for Re Redemption, Redemption is an American band I'm in too mm -hmm. with Simona from GGM. Yep. So yeah, and I mean, in, in that band, I sing Nick's music, you know, which is great for right. me because I, I don't, I can step back and I can just concentrate on trying to, you know, emphasize whatever he's want to have put out there in a sense, you know, which right. is uh, totally different from being in Evergrey where I'm all heart, all soul. I mean, I do, do that. Well, because you wrote the songs and. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's like, you know, it's like such a. It's such a burden on me to to make and record and write an Evergrey album, and uh, for Redemption, it's more. I have to learn a lot of American words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was fun. I mean, the performances were great, and it's it's. I mean, I'm just. I feel blessed to be able to. As I said, I, it's just uh, wonderful to to step into people's. I mean, I'm a musician, and I get to do music uh, all the time. Pinch yourself, at. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, there has always been a softer side. Uh, Evergrey has put out the occasional more mellow track for a metal band. But how did Silent Skies come about? And how much fun was that to like really get into some uh, softer territory, if we could say? Well, as you said, that's actually the, the album I'm recording right now, the second one. So. Awesome. <laughs> I <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, as you said, Evergrey has always had this ballad part of us, you know, uh, and uh, but it was a thing that I had. It just was something that I grew in my mind. I wanted to make score music with vocals in a sense. And then I saw this guy online once that did a cover of uh, one of Evergrey songs called Missing You. Mm -hmm. And his phrasing and his piano playing was, ex I mean, I was like, totally amazed. Yeah, he is. Then I saw another cover of it, and he, he did a one for a song called "Distance of Ours" as well. So, and then I wrote him an email and said, "Dude, shall we? We should make an album together." And he was a huge fan of Evergrey, so he was like, "What the hell is going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, turned out so well. You've got some original uh, songs on there and a cool uh, cover, yeah. and you know, it's uh, it's just uh, and that's the thing. I mean, Vikram is his name is Vikram Shankar. Uh, he's he's I think he's twenty three or twenty four years old. And he's like a, he's like a gift. Really talented. <laughs> I mean, insane, insanely talented. He also has a great band called Lux Terminus, mm -hmm. which is a prog metal band. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, I'm just blessed to be able to work with so many talented people. and have But already around. getting a second uh, Silent Skies album done. How cool is that? Uh, it's, well, it's, for me, I mean, honestly, when we, we, re we released the Silent Skies album in December, then that album had been finished for three years. So, uh, so for us, it's uh, coming on. back to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> now, tour plans obviously have been on put on hold or whatever. What is Evergrey going to do with this time? Write a bunch of new albums. I guess. <laughs> And I mean, that's what I'm doing. It would be stupid of me to not take advantage of the time that I have at my hands now. Right. So, uh, and at the same time, I get to, uh, I mean, we, we, we have a European tour, uh, which is, I think it's scheduled for October, November. And uh, I think that will be postponed. But in the end of the year, we have some domestic gigs that I think we'll be able to play in Sweden at least. And then we'll have to see. How's your life impacted otherwise in the last year? All of us getting used to like Zoom phone conversations instead of being across from you at a venue with a microphone. Um, I, I know I don't, I hardly go out anymore. I'm like grocery store once a week, maybe that. But how has it in, impacted your life there in Sweden? Well, I live on the, I live out on the furthest out on the West Coast. <laughs> the ocean is right on, like <laughs> I can jump from the window. Uh, and it's like, I'm very secluded here, uh, so for me, it, it's uh, it's what I'm used to, basically. Outside of not being able to tour, when right. I'm at home, it's no different for, for me. It's uh, it's uh, it's something that I'm used to and that I, I that I enjoy. But now I'm only at home and I'm not out playing <laughs> at all. So, 
So I mean, I mean, we 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 really miss the interaction with the fans. We it's heartbreaking to not be able to be there and you know get that in, immediate connection with someone playing your music. That's why we do this, you know. And I miss rubbing up against people and drinking <laughs> beer, you know. <laughs> I got to tell you, if I don't get a concert like at least once a month, I get a little itchy, and I'm really itchy right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the streaming stuff is fun and and it's nice, but it's not the same thing of being in a room and that energy that that just happens at a rock show, you know. Yeah, and all those things that you share with a you know a look, you know, mm -hmm. with somebody else with the same T-shirt or whatever. I mean, that's the thing. That's it's not only about the music; it's about this whole social aspect of of going to a concert i mean yeah and festivals and all that good stuff so getting back to the album it's been out uh, almost a month it has topped uh charts around the world which is great what are your favorite songs on the album not that the whole thing is not your baby but like something stands out like you can't wait to sing live <laughs> oh wow uh that was just the thing with this album when, when the record label asked us what what songs should we make videos for we said we don't we don't even know you choose because we did, <laughs> we did for, for us it didn't matter we could they could have made a video of it, any of the songs that they would have represented the album just fine and have uh, you felt that way about previous albums no we have no? been extremely picky about what songs and in what order and whatever uh this time we were picky about the order of songs but not the, so much which song it was so um yeah but i mean i would love I, i'm really looking forward to playing like eternal nocturnal and we're august morns the two first videos but then there are so many other songs that we but i mean some songs get, demand a, a certain setting some songs are great to make it on a great big stage and some songs are just a rock and roll you know smaller club right song. Song. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I look forward to play all of them. It's getting hard now having 12 albums out, you know, it's 150 songs to choose from. So it's <laughs> <laughs> it, well, but that's, you know, that's a blessing in itself, although it's hard to narrow that list down. At least you have, we have all these great songs, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the new and all the new fans. But that's also what's so great because we get so many new fans for the last four albums that curve has gone gone up extremely steadily and uh, for this album especially so they demand the new stuff and they because they didn't hear any of the old songs <laughs> <laughs> and the old, old guys want to hear the the old stuff you know so you know it, it is what it is it is i mean it's a it's a it's a privilege as you say. when you when you finally get to go back out on tour maybe make a game out of it we put some songs in a hat or uh we we play a game of poker or something to... yeah but that means we have to learn 150 songs and well, yeah, yeah you got a point there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um what's the future for you what are you going to be doing the next few weeks like personally when you're not working on silent skies when you're not writing some new evergrey songs what do you what do you want to get done well, that's it, dude. I, yeah, I, you don't have any household I, projects, or? Oh no, I'm, I live in a house that I built three years ago, so it's it's fine. I'm done. Nothing with that. should be breaking right now. Rest of my <laughs> life, I'm not gonna build any more houses for damn sure. So, uh, so this is it. I get to concentrate on this. It feels like a luxury, and and uh, I get to spend time with my wife and my my daughter and and my friends that I rarely get to do otherwise. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll settle with that. Make music, and uh, I almost said make babies, but I didn't mean that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a conversation with the wife. That would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, most definitely. <laughs> well, Tom, I know you have other interviews lined up today. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I absolutely, I, I am not blowing smoke here. I am a fan that goes back almost twenty years. This is truly one of if not the best album you guys have put out. I listen to it almost daily. I listen to Silent Skies almost daily. I love your voice. I love what you do. Please just keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man. Oh. Have a great day. Let's uh, When things get back to normal, let's do this again. You bet. That's a <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye.